you're really uh, against that whole idea of you know, keeping track of what's going on and recognizing the playoffs. Why? So you got to focus on what's ahead of you, which is what the most important thing is, which is not easy to do for you know people that work, players, coaches, uh, organizations. It does no good looking four weeks ahead, three weeks ahead. You have to focus on what's the most important. Uh, that's just what I believe in. How are Hadi and Richie? I think they'll take another step today and hopeful for both of them. But we'll see once they finish going through the protocol. With Richie, I mean, obviously the dogs are, you know, are going to make the decision. But like with two concussions in a short period of time, does that add any apprehension? Or is it just if he gets cleared, he gets cleared? Yeah, I let the, I let the medical experts handle that. Yeah. Any doubt about Leonard being able to I'd play say this week? normal normal Friday, you know, with guys that we make decisions on, go through today, see where we're at, and then you know we'll discuss it tonight. Dave, I don't have a stat for you. You might have it. Um, it seems like Dexter's played an awful lot of snaps this season and really effectively. Mm -hmm. What strikes you about him? Uh, he's a good player for us, centerpiece of the defense. You know, he's strong on the inside. I'd say he rushes the passer well, affects the quarterback, stops the run, things that a good defensive tackle needs to do. Uh, he's been a good leader for us. Wink liked him in the draft, so he liked him, him before he was with the Giants, obviously. Did he make any, any of that aware to you in terms of conviction about Dexter back then? No, I mean, we evaluate, when we got here, we evaluated all the players we had. We watched them on tape and figured which way, you know, which places we could put them to you know, suit our defense or suit our offense, and um, you know, he's done a good job for us. Do you feel pressure? No, I just get ready to play a game. You know. You'll feel any differently coaching in a playoff game versus a December game versus a September game? I've coached in all of them. I've coached you know, when I was 2-14. and 14, I've coached in you know, Super Bowls, not obviously as a head coach or national championship. I've coached or not very good. I think, the, the, again, the hard part goes back to your question is trying to keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, and that's what I try to do. For you coaching, the head coaching job, does that change at all? I know you're all about your consistency, but the losing versus the winning, is there anything you notice and or difficulties for you with that? No, I just think you're always, you're always teaching. Uh, you're teaching adversity. You're teaching when you do well to remain consistent and keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, I know it's a boring answer, but uh, it's kind of how I was raised in this business. It's what I believe in, and I think it's important. When you have a, a rematch against an opponent, do you look more at what you need to fix from that game or what you need to adjust? You know what I mean? Like, is it No, I do. I do. Uh, probably everything. You know, you watch it. I don't know how many times you watch it over and over again. Was that the right decision? Were we doing the right stuff? How was the matchups? What do we need to change? What worked good? Can we disguise stuff to make it look the same? I mean, there's a whole, when you have one game and you're, whether it's the set, when you play a team twice, you know, you, you spend a lot of time looking at that first tape. Um, and for us, we watched all these other games, you know, not too long ago. So uh, I'd say it's a thorough evaluation of that tape. How many times would you estimate you actually watched that tape of that game with, with you guys against them in the last two weeks? Uh, a lot. I, I couldn't tell you the number. It's, it's Are we talking like more than 10? Yeah. Five more, yeah. 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 What plays oh. haunted you most after watching that? Um, there's always there's there's always a lot. I don't want to a bunch of them, you know. There's but there's usually when you're in close games like that. There's four or five plays you don't know when they're going to happen. It could have been in the fourth quarter, first quarter. That you know, if you make them, it gives yourself you know you give your team a much better chance to win. Um, when those close games are you know 20 20, it's 17 to 14. It's there's always one play here or there. You never know when it's going to be. Um, there's usually about four, five, six of them. Learn that from Coach Schottenheimer. Brian, well, why, why is it uh, why is it important to you not to play up the magnitude of this game? I just think it's it's important to do the things you need to do to get ready to play the game. Um, again, I've been in a, a wide variety of situations as an assistant, as a coordinator, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. That's just my philosophy: is let's focus on what we can control, um, and that's the most important because you know, how we prepare, ultimately how we go out there and play, and coach. That's that's what really makes the difference. Uh, you know, what if this happens? None of that really matters. 
since it's a divisional opponent that you played not too long ago, do you streamline your playbook or do you expand it? It's pretty consistent through, you know, it's consistent with what we've done. Um, how many plays we, are you asking like how many plays we have on a call sheet or calls? Yeah. I'd say it's really consistent. Um, it might not be the same exact calls, but you don't add, you know, 40, 50 plays or take away 20, 30 plays. It's, and we always have a, you know, about a number that we think is good and then you have to make adjustments as the game goes. What do you do if Kafka doesn't get his voice back before Sunday? Hmm. Uh, he will. He will. I gave him some cough drops today. <laughs> How are you feeling? Um, in what regard? Help. <laughs> I mean, it's a picture. <laughs> You've talked about it. It's a setup question. <laughs> You've talked about it, the the lack of big runs. Saquon kind of said the same thing with the, you know, you haven't been getting, he hasn't been getting the explosive plays. What makes you think that you guys are close to getting them, that, that they're coming, that they're on the verge of coming? Yeah, well, I mean, you go through the week of practice and um, you put in plays that you think are going to work, and then ultimately you got to go out there and, and execute them. Uh, you got to block it well, you got to run well, you got to make the right checks. Um, it's really a team, a team thing. All of us, coaches, players, everybody. I was watching them so good on run D when they play a lot of, you know, nickel and dime and too high. Like, that's usually the stuff that you can run against. So what makes them able to still stop the run? Well, they have four first round defensive linemen. I think every, you know, the trenches is where it starts, whether it's the offensive line or the defensive line of teams. And when you're strong up front, um, that's a big benefit to you. Is Chase Young at a level where you have to address him personally with, with any of the group? Yeah, no, you have to have, again, how many snaps he plays, doesn't play, we don't know that, um, but he's certainly a good player. Um, coached against him before, um, you know, those edge rushers that are dominant players, you know, you always have to have a plan for them. A couple more. I asked Kafka this yesterday. Um, Washington is so good at controlling possession and the yeah. ball. On offense, how much do you have to try and keep the ball versus also just moving down the field and scoring? Scoring, I'd say, is the number one thing. It always is. Uh, but again, it's those, you go back and watch a game, and you're, you know, the way I watch it is all the way through, and you're, you're watching it. And, you know, we did a good job in the red zone and in fringe, you know, particularly in the second half. Uh, but, you're, you know, they're getting eight and a half you know, dry, minute drives, and then you go to the offensive side, and you haven't had the ball for so long. It's critical that, again, the third downs will be critical for us. Obviously, every down is, but um, creating, good situations for ourselves on third down or skipping those third downs, that'll go a long way. Where are you at with Bredesen at this yeah, point? Yeah, another, another good day. Probably I'd say he's in the Leo category of let's see what what happens today. How big of a role do you expect Landon Collins to have? Well, we didn't make any of those decisions quite yet. Uh, again, all those practice squad players, I would say we can bring up. Uh, Joe and I will talk about that tonight. Um, I'd say there's always possibility of four or five each week. Uh, we'll make that decision tonight.